Some of you may feel like you're going to get robbed. Some of you will get robbed. And some of you don't belong in the category Jay-Z. Jay-Z's speech was pretty on point for the Grammys. It shook the table a little bit. But if you know Jay, this is something that is very on brand for Jay. He's boycotted the Grammys before, been very outspoken. Um, he boycotted the Grammys back in the 90s because of DMX, right? And he articulated his point very well. Beyonce has, this is about Beyonce, if you didn't know. I'm sure you know by now. She has 32 Grammys and never an album of the year. And make no mistake about that, that is an insult. To be nominated isn't enough. To be considered is to win, especially if the body of work calls for. So I want to do a little research of the years Beyonce was nominated for album of the year and didn't win. Also want to go into the opinion of Taylor Swift and how some believe she represents mediocrity. So let's get started. Beyonce was nominated for album of the year in 2010, 2015, 27, and 2023. 2010 was I Am Sasha Fierce versus Taylor Swift Fearless. Ladies and gentlemen, as a robbery. <laughs> Uh, Beyonce self-titled in 2015. Now, if you don't know about the hype and the achievement of this Beyonce self-titled album, I remember 2015 when this came out. She revolutionized the album rollout. It was no buildup. It was a surprise album, came with visuals, very impactful. Beyonce self-titled album versus Beck Morning Light. Ain't nobody around my way quoting Beck. Like, I'm just not gonna lie to you, just not where I'm frequenting. None of my timeline was dominated by Beck moments, but moment for moment, given the impact of Beyonce self-titled, that's a robbery. She got robbed is because I feel like the committee, now I don't know, it's obviously their peers, I don't know their judgment, I don't know exactly what they're thinking of when deciding who wins album of the year. Not everyone can win, there's a very talented bunch of individuals in these categories. And also Jay-Z says that some don't belong in a category, and that's also true i.e. Macklemore <laughs> that year he didn't you know you know things like that is true 2017 Beyonce's Lemonade versus Adele's 25 this one could go either way this is a toss-up ladies and gentlemen it's a toss-up I promise you I couldn't go nowhere without hearing Adele that year supermarkets outside radio it's just she had smashes that one is a toss-up that one could go either way. And I know that Adele, when she accepted her award, she said, I love Beyonce. I love, it. you're great. You should have won this award. Listen, <laughs> that doesn't mean she was undeserving of that award. Just the quality of the work and how inescapable Adele was that year. That's for me a toss up. It's not a robbery, it could go either way. But if you feel it's a robbery, I understand. The last one is 2023 Renaissance versus Harry's House. Both great bodies of work. Amazing bodies of work. In my opinion, I think if Beyonce began, if Beyonce would have began her rollout a little sooner with the videos, she had no visuals. If she would have rolled all this out a bit sooner in time for consideration for the Grammys and for album of the year, I think it would have gave her that push if we go in mo moment for moment and body of work. Harry Styles had a big year. Both phenomenal bodies of work, but I understand if you feel she was robbed. This proves Jay-Z's point to be very valid and very true by all metrics. If you have 32 Grammys and no album of the year, um, doesn't make sense by those metrics. And it also calls to a problem of the institution and not Taylor Swift or any one individual right here's my second point okay i consider taylor swift and beyonce to be two of the biggest pop stars of our generation make no mistake about it this is taylor swift's era but i consider beyonce and taylor swift to be one a one b both had amazing years both have had amazing careers but let's talk about this year in particular they position her as the representation of white mediocrity now that happens taylor swift is not the poster child for white mediocrity, make no mistake about it, okay? Not when you've grossed over a billion dollars on one tour. Now with all the records, she, like she's been charting from albums, like lovers charting, all these different things. She's, a lot of these spots are being occupied multiple times by Taylor Swift in different eras. No pun intended the eras tour, but you know, I just want to drop that in there. I don't think Taylor Swift is the problem. I think the institution is the problem. Um, how you expect Taylor Swift to respond as she accepts her Grammy. I don't know if you are expecting her to concede 
defeat when she clearly won. I don't know what chapter of the book that is, but if I won rightfully and I have every right to prove that I had an amazing year, she should bask in that award. She should do everything. A lot of people had some problem with her promoting her new album during her Grammy speech. And this is my moment. Who are you to say this? You know, I disagree with that. Very deserving of the award, very deserving of the accolades, in my opinion. A great songwriter. Now, you may disagree that this is not her greatest display of her songwriting ability, and it's not the best in her catalog. It's also not Jack Antonoff's best work as a producer. All those are very valid, right? If you think that other albums from Taylor showcase her um, pop sense sensibilities, her great songwriting, her, her hook writing, stuff like that, I agree. However, she's not an example of white mediocrity. I go back to say this is the institution's fault. There has been no black woman to win album of the year since Lauryn Hill 1998. That is an outrage. That is something enough, strong enough to radicalize anybody. This is an institution problem. Make no mistake about it. Now, if you want to say that Taylor Swift benefits from the institution and the bias, good point. Great point. Because it is clear that the institution favors a certain demographic. I think that for a long period of time, the institution of the Grammys, which was supposed to be, it was supposed to represent merit and artistic achievement was going out of the way, I think so. They were going out of their way to exclude a specific demographic. And that continues on to 2024, as you see that, you know, the R&B albums, a lot of the R&B albums and the hip hop albums were not celebrated on the main stage as for a different video for a different time, right? Throughout history, black artists have felt excluded from the Grammys, point blank period. This is an institution problem. Now, I think Given the success of the Grammys, this is the most viewed Grammys in recent years, I think a, um, a change will happen. Victoria Monet had a sweep. SZA, although SOS is truly the album of the year, if we're being honest, that's just me. This is a win for the R&B hip hop genre for black women. And I think it's a step in the right direction. I think by Jay-Z making that speech while accepting the Global Icon Award is needed and I think a tide will happen. It takes for what he said, for people to showing up, for people to continue to do the work, for people to continue to not be discouraged despite feeling suppressed, despite feeling discriminated against, despite feeling excluded, that when the body of work is so impressive, the merit and the artistic achievement cannot go unnoticed for long. So while all these things are true, as it pertains to Beyonce and many other black women to come before her, during her and after her, a lot of these arguments are true. We both don't know how the committee is. They're all a jury of their peers, so to speak. They're all a committee of their of their peers. And if they feel, a lot of rumblings have said that if they feel that like Beyonce is one too much, just give it somebody else a try, that's wrong. We're going by, if we're going by body of work and moment, nobody is more deserving than Beyonce talent alone all this impact alone cultural relevancy current all that and i think that we will see some change to come with the ratings of the grammys and the the rippling effect of this speech it will happen and it will it takes for people being snubbed talented people for it to be a shift for it to be a change and i think more black women more artists in general in these genres in these spaces will be considered hereafter that is my opinion so hope is not lost i know this is an outcry i know this is a rage for a lot of a lot of people but i feel like you know you you took a hit in the battle to win the war and i think we will look back on this and be like that was a very pivotal and seismic shift that needed to happen because this had to happen to an artist of beyonce's magnitude for it to make a bigger splash so that other artists can come and you know, reap those benefits. Previously speaking, a lot of artists were, you know, even Drake, namely, the Grammys don't matter. This da da da, very true. They don't define my body of work, very true. They don't define my excellence and my impact, very true. But if every artist felt that way, there would be no Grammys. A lot of artists are still showing up. A lot of artists still want to be recognized. And if you want to say that Taylor Swift is favored and she doesn't necessarily have to cross over, and she doesn't necessarily 
have to be in the position that Beyonce has to be in to work this hard to cross over and do all these different things just to be considered. Like I said at the top of the video, to be considered is to win. It's not enough to be nominated for Beyonce. It's just not enough. Then yes, I agree with JC's point 100%. So with that being said, I just had to add my two cents. You let me know in the comment box what you think. See you, Lavino, as always. Have a safe. Sweet.